Well, hello, everyone. It's one o'clock again here on the East Coast in beautiful downtown Durham. My name is Sherilyn Berry, and I am an extension agent here in Durham County. Uh, welcome to All Things Food, Gardens and Grub, where I talk about an interesting food or ingredient. Um, and then you can ask me any questions about this food or ingredient or anything else about gardens, food. And if I don't know the answer, I can find out for you. So a few housekeeping details, if you'd like to answer, to ask a question, um, please just put a question in the chat box um, or raise your hand um, in Zoom. And uh, if we were live on Facebook, you could message us, but I don't think it worked out this week. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about this very interesting ingredient that is actually very surprising. And um, you think you may know it, but I don't think you do. So does anybody know what this is? see that what do you think this is people will think oh, well that's a cinnamon stick that's what that is but actually it's not it's cassia it's related to true cinnamon but it's not true cinnamon this is true cinnamon so this beautiful little quill that's the inner bark of an evergreen tree and it grows in Sri Lanka. That's where that's where it's native. You can also find this in Indonesia and um, parts of Vietnam. Um, there are a few uh, species that are related. So these two guys are related. Okay. So uh, in America, we call this cinnamon. And when you smell it, it's got that like characteristic cinnamon smell that we know. Um, but actually, this is cheaper. Um, it lasts longer, it's more durable, it's very hard to crack. Um, and when you buy ground cinnamon in America, you're actually getting cassia, you're not getting true cinnamon. So true cinnamon, oh my gosh, it smells so delicious. If you could smell, if this, we had smell vision that would be amazing because these two things are so incredibly different um, that, I mean, it, it, there's really no comparison. So for culinary applications, I always use this um, because it's so much more complex and beautiful. If I was, let's say like um, mulling wine or orange juice around the holidays just to make my house smell good, I would use this. In fact, I only keep these around to show people the difference. I never actually eat them because they're really, once you start eating this, this isn't that tasty anymore. So um, if you do go to um, some of the Latinx grocery stores, you can get this. This is, this is called canela or cinnamon, true cinnamon. Um, you can get this. It's shipped to Mexico from Sri Lanka. Um, it's also called Ceylon cinnamon, C-E-Y-L-O-N, Ceylon cinnamon. Um, and Ceylon um, is uh, previously, that's what Sri Lanka was called. So Ceylon cinnamon and Sri Lankan cinnamon are the same. Um, and in Sri Lanka and Northern India, they produce like 80 to 90% of the world's true cinnamon. And I mean, it's just so delicate and gorgeous and tasty. Um, if you make a cake or cookies or cinnamon buns, um, this is the choice ingredient. Um, if you're in some sort of baking competition, do not skimp, get this stuff. Um, and I highly recommend getting a whole spice. So when you get a whole seed spice or you get a whole stick spice like this, or if you, um, you know, dry your own spices, uh, you're really going to end up having so much better of a flavor because this will last for a decade. I keep my, this is actually my cinnamon from my house. Um, I also keep my nutmegs in there, my whole nutmegs. We'll do whole nutmeg and uh, mace on another week. That's another interesting story. Uh, but I keep these all together, um, including with my cassia <laughs> for my demonstrations when I teach um, sugar and spice. So when we're back uh, to normal times, we'll do a sugar and spice class live. And that's where we sample and smell like 200 different sugars, spices, salts, and herbs from the world. Um, and this is one of them. So um, I keep these, I keep this cassia around just to show people the difference. And when you smell one, 
and you smell the other, there's just really no comparison. So, but I keep mine in a jar. I keep most of my things in glass jars in the dark um, because this will last for a decade or more um, if you keep it in the dark and it's, and it's a, a whole spice. Um, once you grind it, it actually pulverizes it. And so it breaks this up. This is full of all kinds of beautiful essential oils and they smell and taste great. And once, and they're protected by the dark and also they're trapped inside of the structure of this bark. Um, and so in order to get the best taste, leave it whole and get yourself a coffee grinder. So don't use your coffee grinder that you use for coffee because you don't want coffee flavored treats. I mean, maybe you do, uh, maybe on purpose, but you probably don't want cinnamon flavored coffee either every morning until the, the um, stuff that this is a cheap one this is like 20 bucks um, at one of the big box stores you don't need to buy an expensive one I usually get the one that you know uh, you don't need a lot of buttons and bows this is what I'm saying when you buy appliances whether it's a coffee grinder or a blender anything with a motor in it um, that needs to break things up you want the least amount of buttons see this has no buttons it turns on by pushing this um, least amount of buttons no digital readout and the heaviest the heaviest motor. That's what you want to go for. So the brand isn't really important. It's how simple is it? Because if it's electronic, if it's got an electronic readout, if that piece breaks, uh, the whole thing you pretty much have to throw away. Um, this, you know, like when you see on a blender and it's got like all those buttons that go all the way across it, all it does is make that thing go faster. You can't really chop and grate and grind and all of that, depending on how fast it goes. Um, it's just something to kind of play with. Um, so the best blender or the best uh, coffee grinder or food processor has the minimum amount of buttons, no digital readout and the heaviest motor. So all you have to do is go and pick up the box all the way down the line. And this was one of the heaviest motors, no buttons and bows. And I've been using it for like 15 years and there's, it's, you know, it'll last forever. So you take this guy, you break off the piece of it. And so, oh man, when you break that, oh, so good. So then you take this and just kind of break it up in there a little bit. And then you put this on and wee, 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 wee. I didn't plug it in. So uh, <laughs> I'm imitating the sound it makes. Wee, 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 wee. And, uh, and it uh, will be the most delicious smelling gorgeous thing. Now, um, if you're cooking for a lot of people, um, usually right when I'm um, uh, cooking for Thanksgiving, because that's my favorite holiday, I cannot wait until we all have vaccinations and are safe. We have herd immunity because I can't wait for Thanksgiving again. Cooking like for days, I'll spend the whole week cooking for Thanksgiving. I even start like the week prior. So a couple of days prior to me actually cooking, I will do a lot of prep work, like grinding all of my whole seed spices and then sticking them in the refrigerator. Things like, you know, nutmeg, you would not put the nutmeg in a, a coffee grinder unless you wanted to break the grinder because it's like a rocky, you would use a microplane. Um, and then I grind all, I always grind my pepper fresh. I have pepper grinders, but when I'm cooking for 50 people, I just grind the pepper and have it in a container and I put it in the refrigerator because I want to preserve all of those delicious, beautiful um, essential oils that oxidize with light and air. And so I refrigerate them and then I can use them over the next few days and I don't wear myself out uh, with a pepper grinder and give myself carpal tunnel um, when I'm doing that. So this is just a nice thing to have. In fact, I have a travel spice kit and a travel cook kit. If I'm cooking at someone else's home, um, I want to make sure I have all the spices um, and good salt and pepper and uh, good knives. And you'd be surprised how people don't have tongs in their house and clean towels. I'm that kind of gal. Um, my sister makes fun of me. She's like, who brings their own towels? I'm like, I do. You only have a sponge in your house. I don't like sponges. So I love doing travel cookery. And this guy actually lives in my uh, travel spice kit. And when I need it, I open it up and I take it out. It's just like a little $10 toolbox, but they work fantastic. You can get them out there at the little hardware stores and they, they're steel and they last forever. Um, I really like things that are simple and sturdy and last a really long time. Um, minimal buttons and bows, sort of like earthy kind of simplicity um, because what you're cooking is already complex. So you might as well make life more simple for yourself. Um, I know this sounds like a lot of trouble to have an extra grinder and to do this, but I swear where the taste and texture of your food is going to be so much better if you go this route. Um, and that goes for even if, you know, like we were talking about uh, fresh ground uh, pepper. Um, I, I have 
like five different kinds of pepper um, and they all have their own pepper mills and I love food. Um, and I also have, um, uh, you know, different kinds of salts and things like that. Um, it, not necessarily for salt, but definitely things for like pepper, um, uh, allspice, cloves, things of that nature. If you keep them whole seed in a, in a jar in the dark, they'll last for forever. And then, or at least, you know, five, 10 years, and then you can grind them as you need them. And they're always fresh and delicious. Whereas if you have this, a lot of people have a container in their pantry. And the only time they really pull it out is around Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I mean, when my grandma passed away and I went through her spice cabinet, I have some spices from the nineties that have like really cool, like old timey, or even, you know, from the sixties and seventies, cool, old timey antique um, packaging that I love. And I kept a few of them, but I would never use the spices in them because they're so old, but she held on to them forever. And you don't need to do that because these oxidize and they just don't really taste that good anymore. So let me show you the cheapest way to buy cassia and cinnamon. The brand doesn't really matter, but if you go to the Latinx grocery stores, or you can also find this in uh, Indian grocery stores, African grocery stores, all kinds of international grocery stores, um, even sometimes Asian grocery stores. Um, although I haven't really looked for it there. I look for other spices there, um, seaweeds and mushrooms and things like that. I'm really much more into their produce departments. Um, but this spice is used throughout the world. Um, so this cassia is actually grown primarily in China. Um, and so th they're the largest producer of cassia and then Sri Lanka and Northern India are produced between 80 and 90% of the world's uh, true cinnamon. So this is how I get it. This was a dollar and you get all those. And this was like 369 and they're huge. I mean, these guys are like, it's the size of almost like a hot dog, that guy right there. That, that makes a heck of a lot of cake. So um, you could just break off a piece of it and grind it. Really, really good stuff. But if you buy the jar, I, I usually buy most of my spices like this because you pay a, a dollar or two. Like if you go into the Indian grocery store, they will have like a pound of cloves for $2. You will live your entire life not using all of those cloves, even if you bake all the time. Or um, uh, things like cumin, you can get a pound of cumin for a couple of bucks. Um, I toast and grind cumin. I toast and grind all my chilies. Um, it's just fun and it's delicious. And, um, you know, it's also like a really beautiful thing, like to make somebody's their own chili powder. That's another thing that we do in classes here. When we do a world of chilies, we'll go through and toast and grind and people can like customize their own thing. So um, your food will always taste so much better. Um, in fact, uh, just about every year, my auntie calls me and um, she now is not allowed to compete in her chili contest anymore because every year she ends up winning and she has not made the same kind of chili twice and what she does is she calls me and I grind all of her chilies fresh and I write a recipe for her and give her explicit directions and she always wins because the flavor is unparalleled with anything that you would have pre-ground. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about these. Okay so this is the benefit for culinary. So, uh, you know, the, the true cinnamon is what you wanna use in um, your culinary applications. It's more delicious. It is the inner thin bark of a cinnamomum verum tree. Um, there's a couple of other species that also look like this. And so what they do is they let a tree grow for a couple of years, they cut it off, and then they pile up soil around it and all these tiny little shoots come off of it so that when they cut it and they peel it's called coppicing a tree you can see that with some of the crepe myrtles around here it's called i think they call it crepe murder um, they just chop the tree off and all these tiny little stems come up from it that's bad to do with the crepe myrtle but it's essential to do for cinnamon so um, this is what you would use as uh the most delicious type of cinnamon now there's a bunch of research going on about the health benefits of cinnamon but what they're actually talking about is cassia, not cinnamon. So this is not the one that has tons and tons of health benefits. Although this has been used, well, this one has been used for um, thousands of years in Chinese medicine. And this one, um, true cinnamon, has been used in Ayurveda, um, which is the Indian medical system that's been around for 5,000 plus years. It's sort of their way of life, um, that food is medicine, meditation is medicine. It's like you're, it's, it's a whole lifestyle thing. Um, it really interesting to look into. They really have some amazing, um, well, recipes, but also just ways to look at the world and um, 
how to treat yourself when you're not feeling well um, and the kinds of foods that you would eat that we would have like cooling or warming properties. This is a warming spice. So, um, but this is what they would use in Ayurvedic medicine. This is what they use in Chinese medicine because this is grown in India and Sri Lanka and this is grown, uh, cassia is grown in China. So this one is the one that they talk about that, um, that the research has been done on because it has the most cinnamaldehyde and styrene um, and also things like coumarin or cu coumarin, yeah, not a coumadin. Um, so uh, people will take this for um, reducing their postprandial blood sugar. What that means is, after you eat postprandial. Um, so sometimes people do not have insulin sensitivity. Their, uh, their cells will not uptake sugar. Um, and that's usually an indicative of either pre-diabetic or full diabetes, type two diabetes. Um, and so uh, cinnamon has been studied or cassia, I'm sorry, has been studied um, for use, uh, you know, taking certain amounts of it um, to reduce your postprandial blood sugar so that your blood sugar doesn't spike as much when you eat a meal. Um, it also has been studied um, for its anti-inflammatory properties, um, its blood uh, pressure lowering um, properties. There's a lot of benefits to cinnamon. Um, I did read quite a few studies. The sample sizes were pretty small. Um, so it's not this widespread, um, you know, everybody should go out and buy cinnamon in a pill um, or grind this and make your own pills out of it. Um, I am not a doctor and this is not medical advice. Um, so I recommend if you would like to use it to definitely speak to your doctor because it's not gonna be for everyone. Um, this also contains a lot of coumarin which is a blood thinner. Um, so uh, Wayfarin and Coumadin are two, are, are basically one is the brand name and one is the generic of a blood thinner and it mimics the chemical of Coumarin that's actually in this. So if you have somebody on blood thinners and they also have you know, not very good insulin sensitivity and they just start willy nilly taking this stuff um, you know, to try to you know, help their diabetes, that's not a good idea. So this can definitely be medicine, but you need to talk to your health professional or your dietitian about this before you would go and just start taking a ton of cinnamon. Because here in the US, the way we automatically think is if a little bit is good, then a whole lot is more. I mean, it's it, a whole lot more is a lot better. And that's not necessarily true. So um, everything in moderation. And um, I really prefer this for cooking. Um, you would, this almost has, I mean, it has some cinnamaldehyde, um, but it's considerably reduced um, compared to cassia. So cassia is the sort of medical one and this one should be your culinary buddy. So, um, so get yourself a grinder. And uh, we, we're gonna talk about a whole lot of other whole seed spices. Um, we should probably talk about all the different kinds of pepper sometime soon, um, and maybe introduce you to some different kinds of salts. Uh, but we're gonna do some warming spices over uh, the next few weeks. Last week we did the Allium family, and I really, really wanted to do um, garlic for you this week. Um, but my package that I ordered in the mail for you um, did not get here in time. So we'll probably be doing uh, the garlic family next week. So, okay, well, that's about all I wanted to say about this delicious, delicious spice. Um, I will open it up for questions. All right, let's get going. So first question is, um, I have heard sometimes that some spices from other countries can have toxins in them. Is this true? Yes. So um, it really just depends on what it is. So we're going to get into this pretty deeply next week with garlic. Um, there's a lot of issues with garlic. Um, now, I, I really knowing how a tree grows. So this is a tropical plant. And really, um, when they plant this, uh, they actually might, you know, as long as it's a loamy, well-drained soil and it never gets cold where they are, um, they usually will just do a cutting, um, root it, and they'll put a little bit of like fertilizer in the ground or not, or a piece of fish or, or nothing and stick it in the ground and it will grow. So there's no reason to spray this. It's not really attacked by pests um, unless it's you weaken the plant by trying to grow it in your house and you leave the air conditioning on and it gets below 60 degrees. Um, you can grow this in your home. Um, so it just depends on what the spice is. So, and this is, you know, has to do with tea. It has to do with uh, coffee. Um, well, coffee, it isn't as a